you guys ever just have so many projects you have to do at once that you don't know where to start? That is me right now. As you can see, the sleds are home and they could not be any dirtier. We went riding one last time and um, got the sleds super dirty, obviously. Here, one second, let me mount you guys up. Hopefully you guys don't fall. So yeah, we went riding one last time. I have video from it, it was a pretty cool little ride. Uh, the weather could have been a little bit better, but it was nice to get out one more time. Uh, when we did, unfortunately, where we kept the sleds, there was like no snow in the parking lots. I think they plowed it down expecting to be able to uh, plan for spring. And so going through the parking lots, the sleds got super dirty. So I might pull it out today and clean it. I'm also trying to do oil changes on my jet skis. I kind of want to get that done as soon as possible because hopefully we'll be able to use them pretty soon. It's middle of May right now and the weather's been absolutely awful. So I haven't been able to do anything. It's just been raining every weekend. So I'm hoping to knock all these projects out. We'll do a little Q&A about the sled. I got a lot of the same questions over and over again all winter, so I kind of kind of want to go back and just answer any of them that I will hopefully not get next winter and to just kind of clear some things up about why I chose the sled and how I thought it worked for the season and everything like that. So yeah, that's what we're up to today. And uh, I know it's not the most exciting video. We'll be back on the the machines soon. We'll be out on the water soon and I'll have some, some better content for you guys. I appreciate everybody that watches like my Camaro videos and still shows support even when it's not that exciting of a time of year. But I promise we'll have more great content coming out soon and I'm looking forward to it. Uh, hopefully this is one of the last videos that's not too action packed. So, so dirty. Poor sled. Also poor grass. Okay, so I decided to wait a minute because that stupid leaf blower was super loud. Oh, there it is again. I've never seen people take this long to do a lawn. Alright, well I'm just going to get started because it's getting kind of dark out. Um, 
So one of the first questions I got was what made me go from Skidoo to Polaris. I had a uh, 550 fan, that was my first Skidoo I ever had. I had it when I was like 13, my dad got it for me as um, probably my first like adult sled, I guess you would say. I had a 370 before that, but it was so slow on the lakes, I'm not really sure you could consider it a real adult sled. Um, that was a lot of fun. I had that for three years. I think we put around 2,000 miles on it, and uh, I did a bunch of different stuff to it. I'll throw a picture in this. Um, 440 riser kit, uh, the X-Package wrap, a whole bunch of stuff like that. Then I had my TNT. Um, there's a video of that on my channel, if you're interested. Um, and then I had a, my 800R. Um, I loved all three sleds, but I kind of felt like any shortcoming with Skidoo just continued and didn't really ever change. Um, so, you know, weak bulkheads, not a lot of options when you get the sled as far as like colors you can get and um, just other options in general. I, I didn't love the, the buying process. And, you know, I'd had Skidoo's for so long, I was just ready to change it up. Also, in general, I like the, the new 850 now that this year they came out with all of the other options for the XRS and the free ride and all of that. Um, I think the free ride's awesome looking and it could definitely be something that I could have seen myself getting, but last year they didn't have it and I was looking to buy a sled last year. I didn't really want to wait another year. And I mean, I don't regret a thing. The sled's fast, it's light, it's fun. It's just awesome, so. I think there's always a great market for Skidoo and I, I could possibly go back in the future, but I, I love my Polaris and I don't regret buying it at all. Um, another question I get is how much snow do we get every year? This is, uh, I'm from Syracuse, New York, and I ride in Old Forge, New York. Um, I ride in Forge because, as crazy as it seems, the 90 miles it is to Old Forge from here, they get significantly more snow all year than we do. So, um, we go there when there's green grass here and we're able to ride there. So, um, we're just better off. There's also Tug Hill where we used to ride all the time. Um, we haven't done it a lot in the last couple years because we saw our trailer in Old Forge. Um, which kind of gets me into another question I often get, why don't you ride anywhere else? Um, I want to ride other places. I plan to next year. We, this year, had just kind of gotten back into snowmobiling. Um, we had kind of fallen out of it for a couple years with me being in college and stuff. It was hard. I finally got my first job, but I was busy trying to do as well as I could at my job and I was just really focused on it my first year so riding kind of took a back seat but this year I was able to really put forth a lot of time put some decent miles on even with not a great year and between that and then getting the new sled I, we're going to ramp up riding again and hopefully get way more places um, in next year. I've ridden all over New York State I just haven't ridden many of those places recently in the last couple of years so hopefully this year we can do a little bit more exploring, hit some deep snow on Tug Hill, things like that. Another one I got was, um, do you plan to wrap the sled? I plan to in the future, but I got to order the sled exactly how I wanted. Got to pick the colors of the tunnel, the spindles, the rails, everything. So as it is right now, it's kind of exactly what I want. Um, I'm looking for wraps that are hopefully they accent what it already is, they don't change what it is, because I, I feel like a lot of wraps now are just to cover up what your sled already is and completely change it. So I'll, I'm going to keep an eye out and um, I would really be down to design a wrap for the Assault if I could. Um, I was a graphic design major for, for my first year of college and I've always been into drawing and designing and I think if I really gave it a shot I could come up with something pretty cool. So. That might be something I try in the next couple years and try to get into wraps because I think that there's a big space for wraps that add to what your sled looks like rather than cover it up because right now everybody's goal is to cover every inch of their sled in a wrap and I mean sometimes that's cool and I don't there's anything wrong with that but other times if you can just accent the things that are already on your sled I think it gives it a much better look. Just sit on it all night. I'm making a video. No, oh, that's alright. I'm sure you thought it was odd that I was just sitting on it. So another question I get pretty often is, what kind of helmet do I have? Um, 
I have a FXR Racing Blade Carbon Snowcross helmet. I got it in orange. Um, it's a pretty good helmet. It's a lot better than my Skidoo helmet that I had. Uh, goggles fitted a lot better and just the overall feeling of it is a lot better. Um, the lower section of it's a little bit closer to your face so you don't get as much area for wind to blow into it and the um, breath box on it is just a lot better. It can, it can shape to your nose and whatnot, um, which just helps with the fit of the goggles. It's the only issue I had with it was when I first got it. A lot of the padding was kind of like in weird spots. It went like the center piece was dipped to down, and it kind of like poked into my head. And I thought it was just the shape of the helmet, but it ended up being um, the foam just being in a weird spot. So, what kind of cameras I have? Um, I actually do have cameras. I don't just have one. I have a. It's just like a. It's called the GoPro Hero. It's like it's like the bargain GoPro that they they sell. Um, doesn't have a screen or anything like that, but it can shoot 1080p at 30 frames per second, which is pretty decent. Um, I used that for the beginning of the season, but it doesn't have a microphone port, so that was kind of an issue for me. The battery life on it is actually really good. I had to get two batteries for my other camera, and with the GoPro, I would have never needed to. Um, not that you can replace the batteries while you're out there. They're, it's built into the camera. It has to be charged. You can't, the battery can't be removed, but still, these dogs. My other camera is the Sony AS200V. I got that because the image stabilization um, is quite a bit better on the Sony's. It does tend to skew the outer portion of the shot, but you can't really notice that while you're snowmobiling. It would be more if I was taking panoramic shots with it. Um, it has a microphone port, it has replaceable batteries, um, it shoots at 1080p for 60 frames per second, so it gives me a little bit higher frame rate and I, I love the Sony's. I don't think I would get a GoPro again unless they came up with a better image stabilization. The um, digital image stabilization that they come with just doesn't really work that well. Um, I find that it tends to follow my helmet, not actually what's going on, so it doesn't really achieve what I need it to. And at the same time, the Sony doesn't get as washed out with the white that's in the snow as the GoPro does. For whatever reason, the GoPro just tries to um, balance out the white and then it kind of grays out everything and you'll notice that the trees don't really look that green and things like that. There's nothing wrong with GoPros. If, I mean, I, until I discovered the Sonys, would have gotten another GoPro. It's just, this had the microphone part, which was my main thing, and it had the um, replaceable batteries. And then on top of that, it just is a little bit better for winter shooting. I think if you're shooting in the summer, you wouldn't have to worry about it at all. I also have a Panovo mic. It works pretty decent, as you can hear. It picks up my sound. Um, I'm not using it right now, just because I get a little bit of ticking when it's quiet. That's been the only issue I've had with it, but it's pretty good if anybody's trying to moto vlog or do some wheel vlogs. So probably my final question, and the one I get more than any other question, is why did I get an Assault and not a Switchback or a regular Pro X or Pro S? Um, I wanted to start getting into off-trail riding. That's been my biggest goal for a while. We finally got a trailer big enough to fit um, a longer sled. So I knew I wanted to go at least 137 for the, the bump bridging and the added grip that you get with the longer track. And I want to get into off-trail riding. I haven't done it yet, and I understand that. But th something that a lot of people don't understand is where I ride in Old Forge, most years, this wasn't a great one, but most years they get so much snow on the lake, it's like riding in an open field and I can play on lakes pretty similarly to anybody that plays out in the field. So it's an interesting thing that I don't think a lot of places have, but um, there's been plenty of years that you gotta stay on the, open, the, the beaten path because it's so deep with the 121. Um, and I, I thought I'd be able to get footage of that this year. I kinda got to play a little bit in my, I think second or third to last video, but within a couple days it got really warm and the snow settled. It was just a tough year for it, but um, I also want to go to Tug Hill because they get mobbed with snow at times and they'll have feet and it'll be fun to play with there. Um, so the way I looked at it, I could get a switchback that would be kind of capable off trail um, and really meant for on trail or I could get a switchback assault and just see how it was. It was an all new sled. I wanted to take a shot on it. Um, it's something different. I just wanted to kind of bring something new to YouTube. There weren't a lot of people even making snowmobile videos, and especially not one with a brand new sled, with it being something that wasn't out the last couple of years. They had it in the old um, 
pro ride chassis, not the Axis chassis. I thought it would be something cool. It's been kind of surprising how many people are upset by the fact that I trail ride an assault, but I think if you rode one, you would understand that it's not like um, riding an RMK on trail. I mean, these things are basically made for on trail, and I think the fact that they came out with the SKS 146 just kind of shows that it's really a capable sled on trail to the point that they could make another sled just a little bit longer to give it a little bit more off-trail capability. So um, I think there'll be more and more people with assaults this next year now that people have heard that they're really good on trail. Um, but yeah, I, I couldn't justify getting something that was only a little bit different as far as the off-trail capability when something like an assault could really do both and, and it genuinely can do both from everything I've seen online and everything I've experienced with my sled. So the last thing is I plan to stud it this year and then I plan to get CNA Pro skis. Um, I may also look at Curve XS skis. I had a subscriber suggest them to me and I guess it'll just be the, the, the pricing and the deal I can get. I'm hoping to get them at the Big East Power Sports Show. Um, and then I'll have videos of me putting them on. If anybody out there has an opinion, I'm either going to go black, white, or orange. Uh, if you feel like throwing in the comments what color you think I should go with, let me know. I'm not sure if the orange is going to match exactly. Um, I've always wanted white skis, but it's hard to justify the extra price that they charge for white skis. So, um, And then for me, black. I feel like getting the black tunnel and the black rails and the black spindles, black would just kind of accent that. And I think the skis will really give it that last little bit of on-trail capability that I, I need because it does push a little bit in the corners, but nothing horrible. So thank you to everybody that's subscribed to my channel, and I appreciate all the feedback on my videos, positive, negative. Hopefully we can just keep growing it and keep making better videos, and I hope you're all ready for some jet ski videos this summer to keep you over until we can get back on the sled, hopefully in uh, December. So thanks again.